So you are in the middle of a change, whether it was by choice or not, you're suddenly finding yourself navigating this uncharted territory of something new in your life. I'm Carly Fain, celebrity health and life coach. And I'm Maria Sirwa, positive psychologist. And I'll speak for both of us. We're really excited <laughs> to be back um, sharing with you tools from the world of coaching and positive psychology to help you make this shift in a way that serves you deeply. Um, and so today we're talking about how to begin, like how do you even begin this transition, whether it's something you picked um, and now you need to follow through on, or it's something that kind of came to you and you find yourself unsure, what's the starting point? Right? How do we even begin? And what Marie and I want to offer today is that you do something a little unconventional. Mm. You dare to pause. Oh, I love that. Yeah, dare to pause, to not rush this decision. And you have a great example of daring to pause. I do. So in October, I, my birthday's in October, I turned 57, which is the middle of the end of the 50s, smack dab <laughs> in middle age. And um, it occurs to me, you know, I don't have forever left. I love my work. I love a huge chunk of my life. And it's time. It's time to create something new. And I have no idea what that is. So I actually hired a coach in October to take me through October through December, into a deliberate conscious pause. Because Carly taught me a number of years ago that daring to pause and reflect and allow intuition to emerge and deeper wisdom to emerge is exactly what we want to do when we're making a major shift. Two things emerged in my journey over the last four months. One was I actually, with the help of my coach, structured a two-week break, a pause break in December, where I did very little work and a tremendous amount of reflection and lighting candles and sitting in front of the fire and just dreaming. And the second thing that emerged is this idea jar where I took a little fishbowl and put a ribbon in it. There's a big crystal on the bottom and I stuff it with ideas as they emerge. Crazy, silly, big, tiny. It doesn't, there's no judgment. I just fill the jar. And one day I know soon this whisper of a sense of a new life will actually become clear. And I'll have clarity around the next best step to invigorate my life. I love this because you're leaning into something playful. Um, you've turned pause into playfulness also. Yes. Um, into creativity, into something, um, I mean, that, that it's colorful and bright. This is so you. Like this is so you <laughs> to take a transition and to lean into your strengths, which is you know this this humor and this and this lightness about it. I think that's really powerful. And I, I'm aware, we're aware that that kind of transition of creating something new in one's life is maybe the exact transition that you all are thinking about. And there are other times when transition is much more about letting go of something that no longer serves us, or healing something that we feel is a bit broken. And in both of those scenarios, yeah. whether it's the healing something or the letting go of something, usually discomfort comes along for the ride. <laughs> usually there's some amount of, oh my God, I just want to get through this. I just, I'll make any decision to be out of this place. Um, and none of us really make our best decisions when we feel cornered or we feel reactionary. Right. Right. And so, and so the, the key here from the world of coaching is to is to drop into a place where we're less reactionary and begin creating our own actions. And one tool for doing that um, is just physically remembering that you have a body, like remembering that you have a physical, a physical shape. One symptom of going round and round with the same ideas or a whole bunch of ideas and not knowing where to begin is just that you're stuck in your head. That's just a symptom that we're banking on your intellect, which is powerful, but it's not the only resource you have. Beautiful. Right? We have a lot of resources, as you mentioned, our, your intuition, or call it your gut instinct or your hunch. You know, your I call it my spidey sense when I get this tingly feeling. You know, like ooh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, and so, a way to tap back into that when you find yourself round and round in your head and you're up late at night um, is to do something that brings you back into your physical body. Maybe you hop on a yoga mat. Or he is really into Pilates right now. Maybe you do Pilates. Maybe you go for a run. Maybe you just breathe a few times. You're wise. I would love for you to tell us, when do you feel um, like you're able to tap back into your own wisdom? What allows you to pause and get a little objectivity from your thoughts? Write them in the comments. 
We want to know. We absolutely want to know. So the pause can look like a physical practice like yoga or Pilates or four deep breaths. Pause can look like a journaling, right? Writing. Pause can look like the idea jar sitting in front of the fire with a candle until you know, see if an idea emerges and put it in the jar. We all have our own unique, particular, quirky ways of pausing. What does that look like for you right now? And how could you begin? So please write that in the comments and then join us for the next video we've got coming up. I'm really excited about. We're going to be talking about other people's opinions about your transition. OPOs. <laughs> OPOs. Turns out they're rampant. <laughs> they are <laughs> rampant. And what to do about it. How do you navigate that? Be well. Take care.